Hello YouTube, and in today's video, I'm going to be the devil's advocate and give you a few reasons as why you shouldn't move to Calgary, Alberta. So let's go. Hi, like usual, my name's Adam Fife, and I'm a local realtor here in Calgary. Please make sure to check out my channel as I've been uploading consistently about Calgary real estate, and many of those videos are about why you should move here. But today, today's a little bit different. I don't want to just give you the absolute basics that you can find on any quick Google search. Lack of nightlife, not being an outdoor person, cold, dry air, very short summers. I really wanted to think outside the box and give you some real down to earth answers from someone who can actually see people's different opinion on the matter. I didn't really sit down and think about this, so strap in. So the first one may cause a little bit of arguments in the comments, potentially. But I would have to say some people may avoid moving to Calgary because of our political views here. Now, Alberta as a whole is best described as a mini Texas, in my personal opinion. Our oil and gas industry, our gun control, and our lifestyle resembles that of Texas. Now, if we had to coin a phrase, I think people would call that a right-winged government. From 1997 to 2015, the Conservative Party controlled Alberta politics. From 2015 to 19, the NDP, our New Democrats, took over for a short-held majority government. But during the most recent election, the Conservatives won back those seats and became the majority government once more. Now, it will be very interesting to see what happens next as our current state of politics is slightly changing. Our Conservative Premier, Jason Kenney, has recently stepped down because of an in-house confidence vote, as a quite a few of them didn't really think that he would win another majority vote when they're stacked up against the NDP. So with all that being said, yes, Alberta is a province that has right-winged policies in place currently. But when you look at the municipal side of things, you start to look into what our current mayor is doing and trying to push within our city. And you'll quickly notice that she's a little bit more left-leaning in her decision-making. So if politics are super important to you in that decision-making process, make sure to dive into all aspects of government and not just one side. There are a lot of good articles talking about this exact thing online. So to go off the political point, I want to touch on a little bit of stereotyping. And I personally believe a lot of people see Calgary and Alberta as a whole being a little bit more redneckish. We like our cowboy hats, big trucks, hunting, and acreages. This is not the lifestyle for everyone, and that's completely okay. Calgary has a deeply rooted history for its Wild West culture and stick it to the man attitude. We have over 1.6 million people here in Calgary. You're going to see all sorts of personalities in and around our city. While places like Stampede do bring out a lot of the cowboys in Calgary, for the most part, I really don't witness a whole lot of the stereotype until you start to visit the small towns of Alberta scattered around the province. I think people take a lot of things that they hear in the news, a couple of stories they hear from other people, and really just paint their own picture. Now, there's a sliver of truth that Calgary is a little bit more redneckish, but I think there's a much larger picture that people tend to ignore. Next, I think some people can agree with me here and say that Calgary is pretty touristy. While they're not wrong, it really depends on what you're trying to get out of this place. Calgary is very busy in the summer with all sorts of festivals and mountain activities attracting all sorts of people to it. It can get pretty nutty here. This can turn quite a bit of people off in the summer months as it really does get busy, especially in traffic in certain areas. Seeing as Calgary has a maximum of about three to four months of summer, people really want to get out and enjoy all the nice places around the city without being constantly bothered by traffic, large groups, and noise. Tourists can be hard to avoid in many areas. Couple that with all the construction going on, this can really just add to getting frustrated in all sorts of places. Now, my argument to all this is look, obviously Calgary and the mountains are absolutely beautiful. People pay a lot of money to experience it for a short period of time, maybe once, twice a year. Why not turn this into your home and enjoy all these great things in the off season when we experience Chinooks and cheaper prices on all the things around the city. The tourists can be very annoying, I agree, I know, I understand that, but you gotta know the secret spots and when you can actually enjoy these things when the things are slow. That's when it'll really pay off in the end. So this next one is pretty crazy, especially when you look at the history of Calgary over the past 100 years, even 50 for that matter. Calgary is pretty known for its boom-bust economy, meaning our highs are highs, but our lows are freaking low. And I think this mainly stems from our dependence on oil and gas all across the province. When the oil and gas industry is booming and the pipelines are flowing, things are actually cruising along pretty good. Both Calgary and Edmonton enjoy the benefits from all that additional revenue. But the reverse is also true when we see some hiccups on the global stage and a lack of new innovation and construction of pipelines here in Alberta, both our major cities get hit pretty hard. This turns quite a bit of investors away from Calgary. The economy is pretty unpredictable from people's perspective of Calgary, and that's fair. Luckily, over the past five years, Calgary has really shifted gears and has placed a big concentration on tech and created incentives for tech companies to do business here with lower taxes and other perks. This has just begun in the grand scheme of things, but you can already see some of the fruits of that with Calgary placing sixth in all of Canada when it comes to being a tech capital according to the Tech Talent Canada. While I do agree that Calgary is still a bit boom bust, we are starting to make strides to diversify our economy. Who knows how long it's going to take to fully balance out, if at all. We really do like our oil and gas. So the last thing that I can think of as to why people wouldn't want to move to Calgary is the lack of a large, diverse metropolitan landscape. Now, 
A lot of people that I've dealt with throughout my whole career typically move here because they almost want to get away from that dense feeling of major cities in both Ontario and British Columbia. But the reverse can also be true as to why people may avoid Calgary. I would have to imagine that there are people who believe Calgary as being a small town community with no major diversity spanning across a very large area. If you look at both Toronto and Vancouver, you can see a long stretch of connected cities all around both metropolitans. There seems to be a lot more to do, a lot more to choose from, and it looks like it will create a very large diverse commercial, residential, and industrial section in both those cities. Places like Ontario and BC have large industries like steel production and forestry, with a lot of the industrial activity being conducted relatively close to the major cities. That, in turn, spins off to create more commercial and residential sectors around them both. When you look at a place like Calgary, while it is quite large, it's actually quite small compared to the overall size of the GTA and the GTV. People believe both Vancouver and Toronto simply have a lot more opportunity there. They think job growth is stronger, and being able to find stable income seems to be a little bit easier in those provinces. Now, this is from what I've been told over the years. I could totally combat and argue those points, but with the sheer size of their economies, I can see why people can come to that conclusion and why they would prefer those areas over Calgary. Okay, so all of these things that I've touched on today all have a lot more that can be added into the equation, but I truly try to keep these videos under 10 minutes and truth be told, I don't want to push you away from this beautiful city. Feel free to add in all of the missing reasons as to why people should avoid Calgary in the comments below. Calgary is clearly not for everyone. We all have our opinion on this great city, so I look forward to hearing what a few of you have to say in the comments below. So until next time, peace.